to be right here in AEW. So, Mercedes has been in AEW, oh, what, a little over seven months now, or six, seven months. So, let's go through all of her eight matches and then the one match she had at uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, like we mentioned earlier, her first debut match at AEW was for the TBS Women's title where she defeated Willow Nightingale at Double or Nothing. And it was an 18-minute match, the longest women's match in AEW history. The build leading up to this match was sensational because, you know, they already had the storylines from uh, New Japan. So the promos that were cut, the go-home show right before Double or Nothing was amazing. The match was incredible. Um, Mercedes is still trying to sell that money maker that I'm not a big fan of. <laughs> but she made a point. Because, you know, Willow's kind of twice Mercedes' size. She kind of drugged her out in the middle of the ring and hit her with the moneymaker. And it's also the match where Chris Statlander turned on Willow and um, Stokely. But overall, it was well-received. I was in attendance, man. It, the crowd was split. It was about half for Mercedes, about half uh, for Willow Nightingale. So no complaints. That was done flawlessly. Now, you can complain about, you know, she went in the title on her debut. Um... In a pay per view and a debut match all together, but you know it's Mercedes Monet. It's Tony Khan's proud biggest signing, so you know things like they're gonna happen. But like I said, the creative, I think she should have been more of a full fledged heel going into that match. She was kind of like a tweener, baby face, but she should have been a full fledged heel aligned with the elite, and then we don't got no issues, right? So Mercedes' next match was against Sky Blue, around a seven-minute match to defend her um, T TBS championship. So that's when Sky Blue came out and revealed that she was the one that attacked Mercedes Monet a couple of weeks ago before uh, the pay-per-view um, that she attacked her during the interview. So that kind of made Mercedes a babyface again, right? Because, you know, Sky Blue took on a heel character and you know they wrestled a very good match sky blue is a really good wrestler i hope sky blue at one point who is aligned with julia hart or was aligned with julia hart i don't know how it's going to be when julia comes back but she's a really 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 good wrestler she's a homegrown AEW wrestler and you know her and mercedes they fit well i think they're going to be great wrestling soulmates um when sky blue comes back from injury So Mercedes Monet's next match was um, against Zuxis, and I, I can't pronounce her name great, so please forgive me, but she's currently the, the CMLL Women's Championship, um, who she defeated Willow Nightingale um, a couple of weeks ago at their 91st anniversary or something like that at CMLL, but this is Stephanie Vacour's ex-tag partner who she was champions with as well, so... She wrestled Stephanie Vakur's tag partner. She beat her. And um, that was a really good match, too. It was hard hitting. Very So Mercedes was kind of in her element. It was kind of like a Lucha Libre style match. It was very, very good. Then Mercedes' um, next match was against uh, Stephanie Vakur at the Forbidden Door. I thought the lead up to this match could have been a little bit better. Uh, Steph Stephanie Vicar was playing the heel, and it seemed like Mercedes was playing the babyface. So, you know, right before that match, I think on Collision, um, Stephanie Vicar, well, Stephanie Vicar challenged Mercedes right after she defeated Sky Blue for the bill for Forbidden Door. Then there was a couple of promos cut. You know, Mercedes wrestled um, her tag partner. Um, but yeah, Mercedes went in there as a face, Stephanie Vakur as a heel uh, for Forbidden Door. At the time, Stephanie Vakur held the CMLL Tag Team and Women's Championship and the New J Japan Strong Championship. So this was an all or nothing match. Whoever won this match took home both belts, the uh, TBS Championship and the New Japan Strong. This was one of the greatest women's matches of the year. It was about a 17-minute match. 
Mercedes Monet did defeat Stephanie Varcour, but let's not lose sight. Stephanie Varcour did not, and I don't know if Mercedes Monet was maybe scaling it back a little bit because you know they're kind of close behind the scenes, and she wanted Stephanie Varcour to get her shine on because this is her first big major match on a paper on American pay per view. Stephanie Varcour outclassed and outshined Mercedes. Like I said, I don't know if that was Mercedes' plan, but Stephanie Varcour. The match was really great. It was one of the greatest women's matches of the year. It should be voted as one of the best, if not the best, women's match of the year. They delivered in those 17 minutes. And they didn't even rehearse a lot, what I heard, for the match. They wrestled before, obviously, for to get the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. Uh, so now Mercedes is up 2-0 and against Stephanie Vakor. But all in all, the crowd, so she's in... She she grew up in Boston, so the match was in New York. The crowd was cheering for her early on. Then Stephanie Varcour hit some crazy move sets off the top rope. She did that move set where she grabs the her wraps her legs around the wrestler's head and just keeps slamming it in the ground. And when that happened, the crowd turned on Mercedes. It was Stephanie Chance, and then it was like Boo Boston Chance. And Stephanie organically and that was a little bit of mercedes growing up in boston and being in new york but like i said halfway through the match they was cheering for mercedes stephanie varcour over her natural ability who is not who was at the time not widely known to the casual larger american wrestling audience now she was a superstar already going into the match but she got exposed to the american promotion wrestling fans in this match and they got behind her quickly Stephanie Vakur performed so well in that match that WWE offered her a contract in some shady business under Tony Khan's nose now that's another video for another day now Stephanie Vakur probably was going to join the WWE because there's a lot of history with you know it's, this is for another video but she always wanted to be with WWE, I feel, because she, um, at 14, I think WWE went there in Chile, where she's from. She's a big fan of uh, Rey Mysterio. She actually tried out for the WWE in um, 2018, I think. And, you know, they gave her some feedback. But obviously, they wasn't interested in her from 2018 until she performed at Forbidden Door. And Shawn Michaels and Triple H ran straight to her hotel or whatever they flew her in to Orlando. They sold her, or well, whatever they sold her on, Stephanie Varcour cut all ties and went all in on WWE. But that's another video for another day. But overall, that was a great match, and it outshined. Let's go back. So the Willow match with Mercedes outshined the Tony Storm Serena Deep match. In the pay-per-view of Double or Nothing. And the Stephanie Varcour Mercedes match in Forbidden Door outshine Mina Shirakawa and Tony Storm's match. Just, I mean, all the women's matches were good. I'm just saying Mercedes, Mercedes matches in those, both of those pay-per-views outshine the other women. So like I was saying earlier, that's four matches I called. And Mercedes is already a double champion. So, you know, that's rubbing some people the wrong way. Um, and I think that's part of why Mercedes um, is not getting like this loud. For Mercedes to be as great as she is and the biggest, the one of the biggest stars in the pro wrestling world, she's not getting these crazy loud pops. Like, she's getting pops, guys, okay? There's CEO chants, there's fans. But when I'm talking about pops, I'm talking about Will Ospreay. When this dude is just in unison, Ospreay, oh, Ospreay, oh, dun 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 dun, oh, Ospreay, you know, like Mercedes, it's like I've been to two events uh, while she's been in AEW, oh, double or nothing. And when she showed up in Texas during the summer series leading to All In, it's not, I mean, it's pop, but it's not like, 
the pop that she deserves, but that goes back to how she's being booked. You, you can't just trot Mercedes out there to have a great match and just think things happen. Like, if Mercedes was going to be a baby face throughout this whole thing, she should have grinded a little harder and not become a champion in a double champion at that in four matches. Like I said, she should have been a full on heel with the elite. That would have made more sense to be a double champion in four matches. Okay. Um, but she's not there yet. Like how Will Ospreay is or how Christian Cage is like vehemently booed whenever his face shows up. Like, so if she's a heel, it needs to be like hard booze. If she's a baby face, loud cheers. But, you don't like even when she came out came out to all out or came out to all in, she had a great interest, but it's like it was no like heat, you know. But let's get further into this. So after she defeated Stephanie Varkour to be a double champion, New Japan Strong Champion, and a TBS champion, she took on Nyla Rose in around a nine minute match um for the TBS championship. On Dynamite that she won. Then she took on Hikaru Shida. But let's back up. Before she took on Hikaru Shida, Britt Baker came out at Forbidden Door after Mercedes won against Stephanie Vakor and challenged her for a TBS championship. Now this is long... And this is documented, but this match did not live up to the hype. It did not live up to what was on paper. There were some issues with Britt Baker backstage with MJF and his girlfriend and some other stuff that got her suspended for a couple of weeks. So that really put a damper on the feud and the buildup going into All In this summer. But when Britt Baker, it was just never any chemistry. Even in their promos that they cut, in the interactions in the ring, when they got physical, everything was just off. But in this feud, we had the debut of Camille the Brickhouse, the dominant champion from NWA. So she came in, obviously, and attacked Britt Baker. So she got involved and she aligned herself with Mercedes and became Mercedes, basically bodyguard for now. But she's going to end up being a dominant world champion at AEW. But Steph, uh, it's been rumored that Mercedes Monet wants to start a faction. She named it the Money Corporation. So Camille's the first member, and I think at one point they wanted to bring in the the Robin Renegade, the Robin Renegade and the twin sister, the Renegade twins. But I did another video talking about how Robin spoiled that going into All In or going into All Out because Camille was banned from ringside in a match against Sheeta, and she spoiled it on Twitter. But we get in that another day. But Mercedes came along, and now she's allowed. Um, Camille came along, and now she's aligned with Mercedes Monet. So basically, Sheeta wanted a shot at Mercedes, saying, how did Brick Baker just comes back and gets a match? Sheeta and Mercedes put on an excellent match. Um, this was on um, Dynamite for the TBS Championship. This was a 10-minute match, man. And everybody was like, they they didn't get the chance to cook. But, you know, Mercedes didn't win clean because Camille gave a big boot to Sheeta outside the ring that pushed her in the ring. Mercedes did the moneymaker, one, two, three. But they had really good chemistry in that match. I thought it was a great match, man, for a TV, a TV match for the title. Really good chemistry. And they're both two of the best women's wrestlers in the world. Sheeta's an excellent wrestler. So no issue with that match. And then we had the all-in match with Britt Baker. At some point in all of this, this feud, Britt Baker became uninterested in wrestling Mercedes as she became uninterested in this feud leading up to all-in 
which is a travesty because here it is, this Mercedes first match at All In where she was there in attendance when she was hurt the previous year. And I don't know all the details. I'm not going to fake like I know it, but Britt Baker just was not interested in wrestling Mercedes Monet. And it plagued their feud and it ended up plaguing their match because when All In came around, which was around a 17-minute match with Britt Baker for the TBS Championship, that match was very underwhelming. The Tony Storm Araya made match outshine that match times 10. Now, you can say, you know, it was a good technical match, but there were some spots in there that was just lazy on behalf of Britt Baker's part, which I, I don't know what transpired, but Mercedes normally can carry a match with a, with a bad wrestler or, or a wrestler who's wrestling bad at, during the match at that time. But it was so bad, Mercedes couldn't even carry it. That was almost zero crowd reaction for the first three quarters of the match. Then it got a little better at the end, but Tony Khan had to have been disappointed for for his basically WrestleMania pay-per-view in All In in London in Wembley Stadium around almost 50,000 people. And your biggest star had a dud match overall and it was not Mercedes fault I don't know what happened with Britt Baker I'm not gonna blame it all on Britt Baker I think it was just a combination of Britt a combination of creative Mercedes appeared to have tried her best and it was just not clicking and it played their match it you can say it was a good match technically and another thing that wasn't fair to Britt Baker is she didn't ha- she came back from a horrific injury okay And she didn't have a lot of time to get matches in leading to such a big match. Her longest match was against Sheeta. Then I think she had a match against Harley Cameron. Tony didn't do her any favors by not putting her in matches leading up to it. But it didn't help that she got herself suspended either. So it was just a combination of things going on in that match. But it really put a damper on Mercedes Monet's stock as the best women's wrestler in the world. Because it's like... Even though Mercedes doing all she can, had this great match, that really just took a lot of steam out, man. That dud. And it's not Mercedes' fault all in that. It's creative. It's Britt Baker. It's a whole lot of other factors, right? But Mercedes is affected by it because it was not the outcome that people were expecting. 